All right, I'll say it. Ever since Google's quality rater guidelines were released to the public, SEO professionals have been going bonkers over this concept called EEAT. Some are even calling it the top ranking factor in 2023. And Google has recently gone on record to say that it's being applied to every single search result. EEAT stands for Experience, Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trust. It comes up 126 times in the quality rater guidelines, a document Google uses to train search quality raters. So it's completely understandable why SEO professionals are calling double EAT, or whatever you're supposed to call it, an important SEO ranking factor. But in this video, I'm going to show you that they got it all wrong and that they're wasting their time. And I'll show you what you should be focusing on instead. Let's break down what the quality rater guidelines say about EEAT. Here's where they first define it. They say that EEAT are, quote, important considerations in PQ, that's page quality ratings. The most important would be the T, trust, which is the result of all these things put together. Then they start to break down the components. Experience, does the content creator have the necessary firsthand or life experience on the topic? Expertise, does the content creator have the necessary knowledge or skill on the topic? And authoritativeness, is the content creator known for the topic? So according to these guidelines, it sounds like the focus should be on your content creators, the authors of your content. That's confirmed right away with these examples. High EAT medical advice should be written or produced by people or organizations with appropriate medical expertise or accreditation. News articles should be produced with journalistic professionalism. Science topics should be produced by scientists, and it goes on for financial advice, home remodeling, parenting, and hobbies. So EEAT, according to this document, means you need expert writers. You shouldn't write an article about space unless you're freaking Neil deGrasse Tyson, or perhaps Elon will do. Website owners are taking this to heart and doing whatever they can going nuts trying to work around it. They're bending over backwards to create expertise for the personas of their websites. I've even seen people registering their fake personas as online conference presenters. Or even worse, I've seen website builders stay away from niches altogether. They think, hell, I love kayaking, but I'm not a kayak instructor. I've only been 20 times. I guess I can't have a site about kayaking. Of course of course you can. The quality rater guidelines document is given out to humans to give Google feedback on the quality of the results. Sure, a human might be able to dig around a website and get a feel for how qualified its writers are, but can an algorithm pull this off and at scale? There's no way Google is going to look at the about pages of the billion websites on the internet, check which universities each author went to, and then access these university databases to make sure the author's got a 3.0 GPA or higher on the subject. That's insane. The resource requirements alone are a deal breaker. It may be possible that someday the algorithm can do this, but even then, Will it actually do it? Let's say some guy named Robert Possumfoot writes an article on spearfishing. Google can't find anything on the guy, but Robert Possumfoot happens to be the world's expert on it. He was cast away on a deserted island for five years, and his only sustenance was from spearfishing and the companionship of a volleyball. But Robert just doesn't like social media. There's no internet footprint for the guy. But does this article then get penalized because homie ain't got no EEAT? Here's what EEAT really is. Make sure you're sitting down for this. The real way to establish it is by building backlinks. Whoa. Don't agree with me? Then you don't agree with Google search liaison Gary Ilyes himself. He was asked about EAT and said it's quote, largely based on links and mentions on authoritative sites. Huh? What'd you say? Yes, this whole thing people are freaking out over, going nuts about their authors, is all accomplished with a little old fashioned link building. Sure, there's other parts of the quality rater guidelines that should be followed, and I'm gonna get to them at the end of the video, but from Google's own mouth, it's largely based on links. I'm about to break down how exactly to use links to establish EEAT, but before that, I'd like to toss you an invite to my free SEO training masterclass. It goes over everything I'm doing today to get sites to the top of Google. Just book your spot by using the link in the pinned comment. Now let's start to break down how to use link building to create EEAT. In general, links provide three different ranking factors to the pages they're built to. First, we have power. When you get links from websites with a bunch of links, that pushes you up the rankings. Why? Because Google baked this into their algorithm when founder Larry Page patented his famous PageRank paper. Then we have relevance. If an article about spearfishing links to your article about spearfishing, then guess what? Google thinks that your article is more relevant to spearfishing. And then we have trust. It's this trust part that we want to focus in on. After all, we're talking about experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and the big one, trustworthiness. Trust is what Gary was talking about when he said EAT is largely based on links. If a trustworthy site like the Washington Post mentions you, that's good. So how do you get links from trustworthy websites? To answer this, we first need to define trustworthiness from Google's perspective. There's this concept called seed sites. Seed sites are manually curated sites that Google has selected to be the most trusted websites on the internet. The Washington Post is no doubt one of them. If you get a link directly from a seed site, that's awesome. And I'll show you techniques to get them 
them soon. That said, if you get a link from another website that has a link from a seed site, that's the next best thing. So how do you get these things? I'll give you three techniques that I use day in, day out. The first is help a reporter out, also known as Haro. Haro is a platform that allows journalists to request quotes from experts to use in their articles. It's gotten me tons of links like this one here from Forbes. But in order to make it work, you need to know how to use it properly. For example, let's say that a journalist is writing an article for the New York Post about SEO. And since you've been watching all my YouTube videos, you can now answer their question and hopefully get a link from their article. That's great. But step one to succeeding at Haro is going outside your comfort zone and answering any query that comes up, not just the subjects you're an expert in. Haro is a numbers game, and in order to get 10 links per month, plan to answer 50 queries or more. Answer questions about hiring, travel, cat shaving, anything you can. Next, don't get lazy. Over time, you'll start to give half-assed answers and your conversion rate will plummet. Each time you answer a query, hit a home run. Lastly, jump on the daily emails as soon as they come up. These journalists have deadlines, so they're trying to wrap up their articles ASAP. You snooze, you lose. The next backlink strategy you can use to build EEAT is digital PR. I ran a survey asking people which companies have had the biggest impact on society in the 21st century. I then compiled the results into this article you see here. And yes, that's Pornhub in third place. I then reached out to journalists, letting them know about the story with the hopes that they'd featured it. And it worked. It got picked up by the seed site New York Times, as well as, for some odd reason, my favorite Japanese beer company. Asahi Super Dry. Now, fully explaining digital PR is beyond the scope of this video, but I have a dedicated video coming up on it, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. The third EEAT link building technique is so simple to make you want to slap yourself. And that's simply opening up your website's inbox and seeing which high trust websites are already reaching out to you for a backlink. Look at these high end links going to my site. A large handful of them were landed by simply replying to my inbox and working out a deal. Most successful websites do email outreach for backlinks. It's just a matter of time till they reach out to you. Seize the moment. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that there's some EAT advice in the quality writer guidelines that you need to pay attention to. Why? While the algorithm doesn't have the resources to check up on your authors, there is something it can easily and confidently check for. And that's a complete lack of effort in showing who is responsible for a site. Transparent ownership is something that Google directly mentions in the quality writer guidelines. Quote, understanding who is responsible for a website is a critical part for assessing EAT for most types of websites. So if you make no effort on your about page or heavens forbid, don't have an about page at all, then you're playing with fire. The algorithm can easily check for that. In fact, the quality writer guidelines gives an example of a quote, lowest quality website. And one of the reasons cited was there's no information about who created this website, no contact information, and no information about the author. Moral of the story, create an about page and put some authors on it. Make an effort. Furthermore, the guidelines also have an entire section devoted to ensuring that those in charge of a website are contactable. They also clown on an example of a website of what not to do for having inadequate contact information. Make a contact page. Put an email and contact form on it at the very least. Bonus points for address and phone number. And sure, there's tons of websites out there that are doing just fine without decent about and contact pages. This, believe it or not, is the about page for samiti.org, which gets freaking 7 million visitors per month. But the way I look at it is, why risk it? For two hours of work creating a solid about and contact page, you can be done with it. Future-proofing yourself for future algorithmic updates. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one.